So this is just an update to say that I'm still alive. Um, I know that I was going to start making videos again when the semester calmed down. Turned out it never really calmed down. So here I am. I'm alive. Um, I've been back in Seattle for about a week now. And um, this is the first real opportunity I've had to sit down and really remember that I had promised to do something. So here we are. Um, so there's a couple of updates. I've had two doctor's appointments since I've been home. Um, first one was with the gastroenterologist about my Crohn's and um, it looks like everything's going well. My sort of transition back to taking the Humira has gone well. Um, I'm still in remission which basically means there's no active disease um, chronically. But that's not to say that there aren't still bad days, because there are. Um, I've really gotten lucky with the fact that I've been able to transition back to taking the Humira with no real adverse side effects. Um, it could have really gone another way, so I'm really grateful that um, things have gone well. So with the Crohn's, you know, I'm doing pretty well. I um, I have bad days, I have to be really careful about what I eat, um, but other than that, everything's going pretty well. But that transitions me into my next topic, which is I had an appointment with my PCP, my GP, my whatever your country calls, your primary care physician, or your primary doctor, your family doctor, whatever. So I had my annual physical, and um, that did not go as well. <laughs> So some of the key highlights, I'm sorry if the fire is distracting, um, it's freezing in here so I had to sit close to it. Uh, anyway, main points, I, my thyroid is crazy. So because I have Hashimoto's, which is the autoimmune form of hypothyroid, which basically means that your body makes antibodies that attack your thyroid gland. Um, causing it to not produce as many hormones, basically to not function like a normal thyroid would. So I've had, I've known that I've had Hashimoto's since I was 10 years old. So going on oh, close to 17 years now. Wow, I feel old. <laughs> um, it's never really been stable. And I guess that's sort of a hallmark of a person who has, you know, developed Hashimoto's at such a young age um, that your thyroid tends to never be stable because if your body continues to create these um, these antibodies that attack your own body, basically the disease is going to progress. And now I'm basically on, I guess you can consider it, full hormone replacement therapy for my thyroid hormones. So I'm on the two different types, I believe I've talked about this before, I'm on Synthroid or Levothyroxine um, thyroxine, whatever you know it as, that the generic, um, basically a synthetic thyroid hormone that mimics the T4 in your body. So T3 is actually the active triodo, whatever it is. Um, I also take armor thyroid, which is a natural thyroid replacement hormone that is actually from, um, sheep. So that's cute. <laughs> I think it used to be made from pigs, but I think it's I think it's made from sheep now. Don't quote me on that. I should know, but I don't. Um, so I'm on both of those. But basically what's happening is I'm still having all of these hypothyroid symptoms, but my labs are saying that my thyroid levels are fine. They're borderline fine. So my TSH is actually kind of low which means to say that my thyroid hormones, the T3 and the T4, should be high, but they are actually borderline low as well. So it's really kind of confusing and complicated to know what to do at this juncture because I don't necessarily need more thyroid hormone. In fact, taking more thyroid hormone could cause me to have greater anxiety, um, and we all know that's already a problem of mine but also having these hypothyroid symptoms can cause a depression-like state, which we also know is sort of um, my natural state. 
So we don't want to go either way. Um, so I talked to my doctor about some other forms of therapy that I could try, meaning therapy aside from drug therapy. So uh, we talked about diet, which of course is supposedly my realm of expertise. Hopefully it will be someday. Um, and what we've come to the conclusion of is that I really need to get back on an anti-inflammatory diet. Now, my diet is already sort of bent that way because of the Crohn's, but there's very specific foods with Crohn's that I know that trigger that I avoid, whereas I'm not completely on an anti-inflammatory diet. So I am on a low gluten, but I need to go completely gluten-free, which I agree with and I've known for a while. It's just one of those things where when you're off at school or you're living by yourself or you've got other things going on isn't sort of you know happy happy joy joy you don't necessarily want to be doing it but I know that this is what's best for me so I really need to get into that now I know the holidays are always the best time for big life and dietary changes right but it's sort of I find myself coming back with the holidays all the time because about mid-November to February is when my Crohn's tends to be at its worst. Every year it's like that. It's like a yearly cycle. I think it has something to do with the weather. Um, it also has to do with being around family. It's also finals time. It's family. You get where I'm going with this. So stress is a huge, huge trigger for me. And that's why I was sort of surprised when I went to my um, gastroenterologist and he said that my labs all came back great and that I was looking really good. You know, I didn't have any feelings of firmness or masses or anything in my abdomen. So that was all good. And I was kind of surprised because I was like, oh, you know, I've been having a lot more bad days and bleeding, so much bleeding. Turns out I am a little bit anemic, um, but that could also be because I gave blood a couple weeks ago and I was just barely eligible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I guess it's more of a stress IBS type situation that happens in conjunction with the Crohn's and then I attribute it to one or the other. You know, it, it's kind of weird like that. And everything sort of is intertwined. You know, the thyroid with the Crohn's is hugely intertwined. Also, the thyroid with the endometriosis is hugely intertwined. So... The next thing I guess that I can talk about is the endometriosis side of things. So when you do a physical, you know, they do like a pelvic and they do a pap if you're due and, you know, like aside from poking, prodding, checking, you know, the whole nine yards with the physical. Um, my pelvic exams, I'm going to get real personal and real probably TMI for a lot of people. So if you want to ixnay the video here, um, that's okay. So... My pelvic exams have always been extremely, extremely painful. And I don't mean like, oh my God, it's uncomfortable, stop doing this. I mean, oh my God, it stings, it pulls, it shoot me, shoot me kind of pain. So they've always been that painful. And we've always thought, okay, well, maybe there's, you know, it's an issue with the Crohn's. Maybe there's just a lot of inflammation in the area, pushing on things and stretching things out and, you know, doing things like that or maybe you have an infection, especially with the lowered immune system. So I got everything checked out this time. We took swabs, we took everything. Um, it all came back clean. I don't have any kind of infections, I don't have any kind of anything like that. So, what my doctor is actually su suggesting, which is huge with people with both Crohn's disease and with endometriosis or PCOS or um, many other issues, ulcerative colitis, those are the ones that come to mind because they're, you know, similar to the things I have, um, is actually pelvic floor physical therapy, which sounds weird. And I'd actually never heard of it, which I'm incredibly surprised about because I've done so much research on endometriosis, so much research on Crohn's, the whole pelvic health situation, because I've got multiple things going on down there and I never really heard of it. Um, so and again, this is very new to me, but what I gather from it is pelvic physical therapy or pelvic floor th physical therapy or anything like that, incontinence physical therapy, it's called many different things. 
So what it is is basically physical therapy for your pelvis, um, inside and out. So there's always, you know, a full exam. They get the outside muscles. They look at your connective tissue, your muscle fascia, your muscles, um, externally and internally. So you can do like leg exercises, you can do abdominal exercises, but there's also this component of connective tissue massage and internal stretching and exercises, which sounds amazing. But anyway, I'm um, hoping to get a referral so my insurance will cover it. If it doesn't, I'm gonna wait to start until the summer when I'm back here for three months and I'm hopefully working um, to save up a little bit of money and make it happen because something's got to give My doctor told me that this could get worse over time with the muscle tightening and the fascia and it could be connected to the endometriosis If there's been scar tissue or whatnot um, It can also help with the Crohn's so that the cramping doesn't get as bad So <laughs> That's all the major health updates um, Overall picture I'm doing okay. I'm not doing as great as I could be Clearly, um, there's still a lot of pain. Um, and the other thing that I'm, I'm really, I was on the fence about this physical therapy thing, but I'm not anymore because every time I have my period, which has decided to not even care that I'm on continuous birth control anymore, um, so I probably need to change that, is my cramping goes all the way down my legs. Um, it goes up my back, which is pretty typical, especially for someone with endometriosis cramps, but it also goes down my legs, um, all the way to my knees, to the point where it can hurt to walk, it can hurt to go upstairs, it can hurt to sit down in a chair, um, and that's just not gonna fly. <laughs> um, I'm a graduate student, I sit down a lot, I work on the fourth floor of a 1910s era building, which means walking up four flights of stairs is like walking up eight flights of stairs. Um, and I'm also afraid of elevators. I don't know if I've talked about my phobias uh, in these videos before, but I've got a lot of them. And elevators are one. So um, I need to be able to do all of these things um, and get into better shape so I can help with the inflammation that way. And if I'm in all sorts of pain, I can tell you from experience that um, I'm really good with pain. I can dissociate really well but only if I have to. Um, and I don't have to to exercise. At least that's that's the way my brain thinks about it. So again, those are my health updates. Um, a little bit of life updates. I'm at my sister's house right now um, in Washington still. Uh, it's really nasty, gloomy outside. I don't know if that, that's the window right there. And it looks white because it's uh, hazy and raining and cloudy and windy and everything all at the same time. So that's where I'm at right now. So I'm filming this, hopefully, hopefully I'll get it up today, but I'm filming this the Monday before Christmas. Um, done with all my Christmas shopping, that's awesome. This week I've got some dates with friends, so hopefully that goes well. Hopefully the weather's not too bad. I think it's supposed to stop deluging sometime tomorrow. Um, and I go home tomorrow as well, back to my puppy. My puppy is doing well. He's turning 12 tomorrow. Tomorrow is his birthday. Um, what else? What else? So, um, I got a 4.0. I got five A's and two S's for my clinicals. S just means satisfactory. So, with my seven classes, I basically got A's in all of them. I read my reviews for my clinicals, and I think I did pretty well. Um, I'm extremely pleased with that, considering the last five months have been a beast, um, to say the least. And I didn't mean to rhyme right there. So that's the school front. I'm starting to write my thesis while I'm here. I started, I did a, a pilot proposal project um, last semester. Now I'm really starting to write it in earnest. I got my thesis chair assigned to me. So... Yeah, full steam ahead with that. Um, I've also really kind of decided what I want to do with my degree, which I can talk about in a later video if people are interested. Um, I think it's really kind of neat, and everyone that I've told really thinks that I'll excel at it, which is at once surprising and amazing to me because I, <laughs> I don't really think very highly of myself, and I'm, I'm pretty sure people know that. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, my preceptor thought it was a good idea. My therapist thought it was a good idea. Uh, my friends all thought it was a good idea, friends inside and out of the dietetics world. Um, yeah, but there's a very specific job that I want, so I'm writing a job proposal um, starting now so that I can continue to work on it for a year and a half until I take the exam and um, I'm ready to apply for jobs. But it's very, very specific and I'm creating, ideally I'd be creating a new position for myself. Again, I don't think that highly of myself, so why would someone hire me off of my word? But we'll see. I'm going to I'm gonna get a lot of help on this proposal. I've, I've decided that some things are worth, worth asking for help for. That was a mouthful. And clearly I'm not comfortable saying it because I barely had it out. Anyway, um, the dye in my hair is just Kool-Aid, but it won't come out. I've, it's been dyed for two months now, and it's just being stupid. Um... <laughs> That is neither here nor there, but um, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm really going to try and put more videos up. I know I keep saying that, but I am home for a month, and there's a lot of exciting things that I've learned. There's a lot of exciting things on the horizon for me, so um, don't expect too many videos in the next two weeks. Maybe another one this week, one or two this week, just because I've got a lot to talk about, clearly, because we're 16 and a half minutes into this rambly vlog and I'm still rambling um so yeah but then next week the week between Christmas and New Year's it's really kind of busy for me so um that and my sister and my dad are home all the time so that's not really conducive to filming um yeah that's about all I've got to say so thank you for sticking with me till the end and I promise more videos are coming soon and thank you for watching. I appreciate all the love and support. And yeah, that's all I've got for today. So thank you for watching.